Hi everyone, welcome back to Atomic Underground. My name is Nick. As you can see, it's raining here in Arkansas today. We're finishing removing mud from both rooms of the blast lock. While we're down there, let's take a look at some of the other things you haven't seen in a while. See you downstairs. Might be able to hear a little bit of the digging sound in the background there. I've got people uh, finishing up removing the mud from our blast lock. She's look at some of the cable runs here. You just barely see them back there in the dark behind uh, door nine. That is the last remaining copper wire we have in the entire facility that I know of. And it's uh, about 10 feet long. So there may be some value there, there may not. Decontamination room is still uh, full of scrap metal that's going to get hauled out, hopefully in the next few months. So I move into launch control center here. Still have the cable runs, but these ones are empty. There's no cable in them. We're going to continue straight on through door number, this would be eight, into the launch control center. So a few months ago, you saw a video of us scrapping uh, parts of the short cable way here. And that is where we left off. We have not come back in and finished uh, this racking on the, uh, this would be the north side of the tunnel. I do uh, have a saw that we picked up that should be able to cut through this. But the design of this racking see it's all box construction. It made it really hard on the plasma cutter. Uh, it is possible, I'm looking at different ways to cut this up a little more efficiently because as I mentioned before, the short cableway is kind of the practice area. The long cableway is 120 feet. So that's uh, what's going to take the most amount of time. And the short cableway here itself took us about two days. We just can't uh, spend two days to do 30 feet of tunnel. We've talked before about our ventilation. This is just a lay flat plastic ducting. We can run it to wherever we need. I added a floodlight in level two of the launch control center so you can see a little better. This rack that's right in front of us is probably still there because of, as they were decommissioning the silo, that was where the power came in right up until the last minute.
everything you can see in the ceiling there from the lights to ducting and conduit is all coming out. That adds about another two to three feet of ceiling space and really shows the beams in the ceiling, which are incredible. The spring that you can see on the screen right now, that's one of the large springs. And just a second on the left side, you're going to see one of these smaller springs. Both of these are still absolutely huge. And we're going to take a look real quick at how we got the blast lock out for those of you that missed that video. There it goes. Here it comes. Hang on, wait, wait, it's already out. So let's... As we continue looking around level two, Everything you can see that's structural in the building will remain. If it's not structural, we're going to be cutting it out and scrapping it. Exceptions to that being the blast valve we're going to keep because it's historically important. Also the staircase. I haven't made a decision on that. At least one of the other sites, the staircase has been replaced with a spiral. That makes a lot better use of the space. But I kind of like the one that's there. Let's go take a look down on level three. I haven't been down there in a while, and I was able to move a extension cord and floodlight down there to get at least partial view of the room. It's just a space we still have not done anything major with except for opening the escape shaft, so I've never run good lighting down there. It makes it very hard to film. And this is also now one of the last places where there's a significant amount of mud on the floor. So as I move the light around to uh, get kind of a better filming angle here, what you're looking at, some of these old racks are all, um, some of the communications and uh, computer equipment from the silo, that's all coming out. I would like to save as many of the cabinets as I can for future use on different projects. You can see in the back corner there, that's the blast, or sorry, the escape hatch. This was us opening it about a year ago. Booyah! It's empty. As we pan back around from the escape hatch, I'm going to take a look here at the uh, septic system. Septic system is all still intact. The only thing that's missing from it is the two electric pumps that were removed. So we're going to open everything up, clean it out. Other sites have found that the pumps themselves are in good condition even after being almost 60 years old. So hopefully all we have to do is hook up electric motors and that will take over for all my sump pumps in the future. As you can see, areas that we've uh, completely stopped water in is, are drying out nicely. It has been about six months since there was any water flow in here. Also in the launch control center, you can see there's no more water actually flowing on the floor since we pulled the blast valve out last month. The drip that we have coming in through the overpressure or the uh, pressure delay pipes that were behind the blast valve is so little that there's only about four inches of water below the floor on level three. It's proving to not be much of a problem. I don't even have a pump installed down there anymore. Things are a little different from the last time you saw. We can actually see the sill for door number seven. This is all down to the floor. Uncovering all kinds of cool uh, artifact type stuff. Last little bit of mud in the corner here.
And as you can see, door seven does work just fine. Can't see much behind it, but I have a pump installed there just for us cleaning this room out. Now here, all the trash is gone from the elevator machinery area. We're gonna take one look at the uh, gantry crane doing its thing. I'm gonna show you a little uh, video of actually removing the mud from both rooms of the blast lock. I sped this up 3,000% and even then I had to remove a lot of video. This took about eight hours for us to clean out uh, the second half of the first room and then all of the second room. It has made such a tremendous amount of difference inside this site to have these rooms to where you can walk through without having any more water or mud. Your fault. 